Additional um, customization and costs um, include the following modifications on this slide um, or some upgrade options that may, again, be required or may um, be something that you choose to uh, take advantage of. Um, there are a variety of things here. Um, the first is uh, microinverters. Um, Larry, would you mind just taking for a minute um, describing what a microinverter is? Sure, Brian. Um, traditionally, all of the solar panels in an array were wired to a single inverter, and they all contributed to voltage to making, uh, making the current that came out of that. But because of a small design issue in so the way solar panels uh, work, there could be a problem if you had partial shading. If, say, a large tree branch partially shaded the panel for part of a day, just having a corner of a panel shaded is enough to make the output from that entire panel come down tremendously. And if one panel comes down, it can often bring down the adjacent panel's voltage and the whole array can suffer. So as a result, to, to counteract that, a few years ago, a new kind of inverter was invented that instead of having one large central inverter, it makes a small cigar sized cigar box sized inverter that goes on the back of each panel. So each panel has its own mini. In fact, they're so small they call them micro inverters. The output from each panel can be then converted into AC separately. And if one panel does happen to have reduced output because of a temporary shading from a tree branch or a telephone pole, only that module is affected because it has its own inverter. The other Panels have their own microinverters and are unaffected by the shading, and it can make a dramatic increase in the efficiency if you have a complicated roof where you have chimneys or dormers that cast uh, partial shade during the day. Microinverters can help greatly to minimize the effect of that. Great. Thanks, Larry. Um, so that if you choose that option, um, which certainly some homeowner, homeowners do, um, there's an additional cost for that essentially equipment upgrade. Uh, in terms of the solar panels themselves, um, we'll talk more about the baseline panel a little, little bit. Um, but if you choose what um, the installers like to call a commodity panel, um, that's traditionally a foreign-made panel um, of a little bit, I don't want to say lesser quality per se, um, but is a cheaper option for um, homeowners. You can actually take off about 20 cents per watt from the pricing schedule that I showed a couple slides earlier. Um, conversely, uh, you can choose to upgrade your panel type to the Sun Power High Efficiency Panel. And that uh, cost is about $0.95 cents per watt. So again, these are costs that you'll either add or subtract to that baseline pricing schedule that I showed you a couple minutes ago. Uh, the Sun Power Panel and the High Efficiency Panel essentially produces about 20% more power um, in good solar on a good solar access roof in the same amount of space as a standard or typical panel. And this comes into play when someone may have only a small area in their home, I'm sorry, on their roof where um, solar has really good access and they want to meet, let's say, you know, 75 or 100 percent of their energy needs through solar. Uh, upgrade to a higher efficiency panel um, is probably going to be a good option for them. Multiple arrays, um, that's essentially an upgrade option. Well, that's a, more of a customization uh, option where um, you need to have more than uh, one array uh, in line uh, on your roof. Um, for example, a chimney or a dormer somehow breaks up um, where your solar, best solar access is, and the installer needs to essentially create two or multiple solar arrays. Uh, monitoring um, essentially allows you to monitor the production of your solar system. But more importantly, uh, it allows you to monitor uh, if there are problems with the system. So, for example, um, some panel for some reason stops working, um, or a few panels stop working, or a wire gets severed, or who knows what could happen. Um, your monitoring is the best way to be able to almost instantaneously know that um, something's wrong with your system and, and you need to get it fixed right away. Of course, that uh, shouldn't happen and is infrequent, but uh, nonetheless, it's a, it's a good thing for you to have. Um, and then the other uh, uh, potential customization costs are roof conduit runs. So if you had to run conduit over a greater length of about 100 feet, um, which again would mean basically you'd have a solar system on one part of the building or home and uh, the electrical box and where it needs to hook into is um, completely on the other side of the house and it 
tends to be a really, really big house. Um, it's not a situation that happens often, but, but could occur. Um, and then interior conduit run. So if you are, as a homeowner, are willing to um, provide the openings and the patchings for the interior conduit run, there's no charge to you. Um, the, the installers will help you understand where those patching or where those openings need to go so they can feed the wiring through. However, if you'd like them to do that, um, they will charge approximately about $50 per hour, um, plus any, any materials to, um, to do the patching. So um, these costs as, a, as individual additions or subtraction, I guess most mostly additions, um, don't really make a significant impact probably on the overall affordability of the system. But collectively, if you, you, know, you choose to do many of the upgrades and you have a situation where you have, um, let's say, a tiled roof and um, uh, have structural issues that you need to deal with and you have um, uh, a, a house greater than two, two stories, those things do, you know, may start to add up. And, of course, uh, the installer would uh, make those costs clear to you up front before you sign any contract. But I wanted to be clear about what some of the next steps are, uh, depending on where you are in the process. Um, some of you um, who are just kind of new to the program and just hearing about it for the first time, um, the first thing that you want to do if you live in the city of Madison is to schedule what we call a quick look site assessment. And Larry will probably talk about that in a minute or two. Um, but essentially what that is, is Larry will take an aerial photo of your um, home and based on his expertise, will determine whether or not you get an A, B, or C grade for solar. And A being, from the looks of it, you probably have good solar potential. B being, eh, there's some questions around what your solar potential might be. And C being, um, probably no way uh, in the world you're going to have good enough solar access to uh, um, invest in, in you know, solar energy and get the kind of production that you're expecting. If you qualify, meaning if you get an A grade um, from Larry, then you can follow up uh, based on his quick look assessment and he'll send you um, via email uh, the results of the quick look assessment. If you get that A grade, you then qualify for the complete full site assessment and that's a one hour visit from Larry where he um, measures your solar access and produces a report and he'll talk a little bit more about that. The other uh, thing that we want to encourage you to do in terms of next steps uh, is to continue to educate yourself about solar and there's some really great opportunities coming up. Uh, the first is this weekend on Saturday, the Midwest Renewable Energy Association. Uh, if you just Google uh, Midwest Renewable Energy uh, Association, you'll see that they're hosting a solar tour. Uh, several homes and businesses are opening up their um, buildings this weekend. Uh, I think it's Saturday from 10 to 4 o'clock for uh, anyone from the community to come visit and uh, talk about their solar system and learn more about their solar system. So it's a great opportunity for you to get um, up close and in person with um, other customers of solar energy as well as the technology itself. Um, and the other opportunity to learn more about solar and we'll talk about in a little bit is the time of use workshop. Uh, another next step that we want you to complete um, is moving forward with the process just to start looking at your financing and arrange financing. Um, it's a very uh, important thing for homeowners to um, try to have figured out beforehand and hopefully now that you have a sense of what pricing may be, you can at least ballpark what the kind of financing you, you might need for uh, participation in the program. And then the last step before we really sort of um, uh, hand you off, so to speak, to the installer is to complete an enrollment form. And this enrollment form uh, looks like this. And basically it's just a memorandum of, of understanding uh, between you, um, the homeowner, and the Madison Solar Program. And it says that you intend to uh, uh, participate in the program and understand that by completing this document that you've um, attended a workshop or webinar, you've arranged for financing, um, you've received a solar site assessment and have com com carefully reviewed the uh, final information in that report, so on and so forth. So at the appropriate time, um, you fill this document out and uh, you submit it to us. So again, I just wanted to kind of, um, for those of you who are a little bit more visually oriented like myself, um, kind of review the, the process here in terms of um, how you go from where you are today to um, completing your solar installation process. If you see this sort of blue box here on dotted lines, that's sort of the Madison process. Anything outside of that is where we sort of pass you on, so to speak, to the solar installer. Um, 
starting in the left hand corner that's where you get your quick look assessments um, that's where Larry determines whether or not you get that A, B, or C. Um, you get the B or C grade. Uh, chances are you're going to want to probably say no thanks. However, there may be some folks in the B category if you feel strongly that you'd still like to have us come out and do the full site assessment and you live in the city of Madison, um, we'd be more than happy to do that. Because um, some people, even if they have some shading, um, are still going to want to move forward with solar for a variety of reasons. Um, it, once you uh, have that quick look assessment, then you uh, schedule the site assessment for those of you who, again, got that quick look A. Um, and then we expect you, if you haven't already, to participate in one of these workshops. Of course, many of you, um, well, all of you are doing that today, so you can check that off your list. Um, from there, you can either participate in the, the time of use study, and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Um, but again, we want to make sure that you have financing available. Um, so we encourage you to take that step in the process. And then um, after that, uh, you have to fill out that enrollment form, a memorandum of understanding. And again, the deadline to participate in our program is October 31st. So you have to have that paperwork into us by October 31st. And again, that's really driven by um, the need to have the system connected to the grid and um, have MG&E come and um, throw the switch, so to speak, by December 31st so you can take advantage of the current focus on energy rebate. So at which point, um, if you do sign the uh, Madison uh, enrollment form, uh, we pass that along to the installer. Um, generally, within about two weeks, the installer will schedule a site visit. If the information provided in the site assessment um, that Larry Walker has already completed through the Madison program is sufficient, they may be able to even give you a quote or a bid on the project without even having to do the visit. So sometimes it depends on um, well, it depends on the installer, but it also depends on, um, you know, basically how how uh, good of pictures um, that Larry was able to take and put into the report so that the installer has enough confidence to say, generally speaking, this is how much um, the system will cost you. At that point, um, you'll if you agree to sort of move forward with the process, you will um, um, get a contract and other paperwork from the installer. Um, in some cases, um, they may require um, some structural engineering. And this is um, an instance that um, doesn't occur for many, but for some, especially some of the older homes, uh, you may need some additional roof reinforcements, um, at which point they will have to do some engineering to determine what kind of reinforcements needed, do the pre-work before an installation can begin. Um, and then at which point uh, you will uh, begin the installation process. Generally speaking, for the size systems that we're seeing in the program, that installation should take about three or four days. Um, and again, after that, then you can be connected to the uh, power grid. That has to happen before December 31st, at which point you may then start to receive some of the incentives after the system goes online. Um, I just wanted to take a quick step back and point to that um, uh, red arrow and red question mark and that basically is a reminder for me to tell you that um, after your contract is signed um, any um, expenses incurred by the installer um, this is pretty standard practice um, any any cost incurred by the installer after the contract is signed will be due to them um, regardless if you decide to move forward after that so if something comes up and um, you decide to um, drop out of the program or to cancel the installation, once that contract is signed, um, they can and, and will include language a clause in the uh, contract that uh, anything done up until that point will be essentially um, a due to them. So that's just something to note. And then in terms of how long before you actually get your installation completed, from when you si signed your contract, um, that's really um, um, kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, the installers have given us assurance that if for some reason they are not going to be able to complete your installation before December 31st, they will let us know before you sign that contract. Um, however, if we don't have any indication from them that they can't um, complete an installation before December 31st, as long as they've received that signed MOU or enrollment form by October 31st, um, they should be able to complete the installation so you can take advantage of that focus on energy rebate. 